Hello everyone, welcome back to the Reaper blog weekly community hangout. This is week number seven out of 50 that we're doing this year. Feeling a bit tired. I don't really know what we're doing today. I got a couple ideas, but it doesn't feel like a full show. This week has flown by and I don't know what's happened. Um, did I release the video? <laughs> I don't think I did, other than the uh, the update. I feel like I've been working on stuff nonstop, but then there hasn't been a lot to show for it. So that's always frustrating. Since my last stream, haven't published a video. I've been working on it, though. This might be just kind of a casual Friday hangout. The thing that I've been working on since Monday has been the chat GPT video with the concept or title of now anyone can code rescript without learning code, but it's been a bit more frustrating and involved than that. I have a bunch of it recorded and edited, and then I'm getting to the part where I have to demonstrate and then sh prepare to share my scripts. I keep running into edge case issues where they're not quite good enough to release. I'm just trying to resolve all those things so that I don't have to put in a bunch of effort to support it later. If you guys have any questions about Reaper, put them in the chat. We'll try to get through them as they come in. Is there a way to render item effects at the item level, not the track? Yeah, the glue function will do that. That's one way. Toucan Studios released a new plugin, Blacklight Modulation. Uh, he had a video on his channel that I checked out. It's pretty cool, and I'd like to play with that today. Before we do that, a quick mention. My friend Mike Delgadio is doing a live session, sort of masterclass thing over Zoom. He is a voice actor, voiceover artist, and uh, he's using Reaper. So if that's a career that you would like to uh, pursue, this would be a great way to get started on that. Not a free event, but I think it's going to be a good one. Probably know Mike Delgadio from the Booth Junkie YouTube channel and website. There's no Reaper updates this week, just some beta stuff, some pretty cool stuff in there that we can't talk about. I released a podcast, it's a Mastering Show podcast. I wasn't on this episode, but I edited this episode. Uh, Ian Shepard is talking to Joe Caithness, who is a DJ and mastering engineer. And uh, and this is kind of in response to the uh, Dan Worrell's video, DJs want loud masters because DJs are idiots. So there's sort of a rebuttal to that because it's a lot more complicated than it may seem. So that's going to be found at themasteringshow.com. I'm usually on the episodes, but sometimes when it's it's a, um, a guest from the UK, then it makes more sense to record it at a time that's convenient for them and not a time that's convenient for me on the other side of the world. I'm getting into Reaper videos. Any tips uh, creating videos in Reaper? Yeah, well, I'll suggest my video tools course and I'll put a link here. Reaper blog video tools, presets and training. There is 20 something video tutorials plus a bunch of um, presets, glitch effects, using item fades to zoom and crop and things like that. There's light transition, bonus transition effects and things like that. It's $30. This is a huge way to help what I do on the Reaper blog. John Matthews is here from Toucan Studios. John, we're actually going to talk about your new plugin, the, um, what do you call it? Blacklight Modulator. I wanted to check that out. I saw your video and uh, thought that that would be a um, fun thing to play with. Video text items you use often. Are there any ways to save that like a full item to drag and drop? not just like a video render, but editable. Um, if you have reusable things, put them into your template. Other than that, changes you make to the video processor code will be saved with effects chains. So you can save an effects chain and then you can use an action to insert that onto a empty MIDI item. Or if you have a track template, you can import all that and save it with the media. But generally, I save the effects chain on the item and then just change the item name and that changes the text on the screen. That's how I do it. Blacklight modulation 
from series two of Toucan Studios. This is a free plugin that you'll find in Repack, sort of a, a multi-modulation effect. Yeah, I'll put this on as my amp. The guitar is the Fender Aerodyne Telecaster, if anyone's wondering. Oh, it is resizable. I was just about to ask if this is resizable. I wasn't sure if that was possible in JSFX, but I'm glad to discover that naturally. So tremolo, auto pan, filtering, phaser, flanger, and chorus. Nice to see that each page has a different UI. That's pretty cool. You're probably going for line six, but this looks like Behringer to me. Yeah, cool stuff. Do you have presets? No. John, you should make some presets for your plugins. Okay, so um, first thing I discover is that they're not simultaneous. It's basically one modulator plugin, and you can choose to assign that LFO um, to one of the effects. And there's a stereo offset. So I've got this before the the amp, it's probably not going to... Well, it does. So that Ampeg actually supports stereo. You, you can multiply it by 10, which is pretty cool. Lots of options for tempo, which is nice to see. And then there's even dotted and triplet, although you'll need to be on. And so this cycle with the uh, modulation always starts from the center point, but you can shift this by up to 360 degrees to change that. So when, in the case of a tremolo, if you want it to start quiet versus starting loud or starting, yeah, getting louder. And it can be kind of a subtle change, but nice to have all these options. And if you want a full back and forth, left, right panning, just go to the pan mode. All right, so this is a LFO um, driven filter. And there's different shapes. So band pass, high pass, EQ. So with the EQ mode, I guess that's... Um... You know, it's probably not as advanced as the, the full sound toys thing, but... Um... Yeah, you can you can do quite a lot of, with it. I actually didn't show you the different shapes. With the 64 step one, you can kind of draw in a shape. 
put this back on a uh, low pass. I mean, you could definitely get a lot of the like, or very similar results uh, with this to um, Filter Freak and some of the other sound toys effects. A lot of the sound toys effects have advanced modulation stuff and then ways to modulate that. I think it's most interesting how you can apply some of these weird um, modulation shapes to effects that you wouldn't normally see that on. So like the phaser or the flanger. You don't normally see a square wave uh, shape for a flanger. I just saw your message, Jason. Mage said, I enjoy Dan Worrell's review of ShaperBox 3, even though they paid him to do it. That's one of those tricky things about YouTube. A lot of the larger channels are having discussions about this. In a way, the YouTube channels are replacing magazine reviews. And a magazine review, they would get the product for free, or, or maybe even paid. Maybe they're also advertisers in the magazine. Magazines are paid through advertising, and then the reviewer would be paid by the by the magazine, not the company directly. So there's less ethical issues there, but but still, you wouldn't often see negative reviews of a product in a magazine that also has advertisements of that product. It's pretty rare to see. Now on YouTube, everyone is independent. They're paid through advertising from YouTube, but also we as influencers have a lot of influence. And so if we do a positive or negative review, that can really impact a company. Companies send us things for free or sometimes with payment. And then there's this moral dilemma of how am I gonna do an unbiased review of this if I'm getting paid for it, if I'm getting it for free and things like that. So I always consider if I got something for free and everyone else doesn't also get it for free, like in the case of this Toucan Studios plugin, it's a free plugin, everyone has it. I don't get any benefit more than you guys do. But if it's a, a free microphone or something like that, I consider it a paid review. I got this product that costs $200 to you. I got it for free. 
I can keep it or not, but it still has a value. It's impossible for me to completely unbiased make a video about that or a review about that product because I got it for free. Only other way to do it is to pay for every single item and then there's a lot fewer things that I can review unbiased. I think going forward a lot of this stuff is going to have to be getting the product for free plus getting a budget to produce the video, but I don't know. As long as there's clear disclosure to the audience, I think it's all fine. I, I think when people get something for free and get paid for it and make it seem like they bought it, they went out and bought it, they found this thing, when it's a marketing gig, then uh, that's not ideal. That should be called out. I think as long as it's disclosed that I got this thing for free and I have a relationship with this company or or it's I bought this on Amazon and you know use my own money on it but there's an affiliate link where I would get paid for it I don't know is negative delay not the same as nudge it depends on how you want to do it if you want to do it in real time through Reaper's, um, what do you call it? This thing, media playback offset, and set this to minus something. That's gonna essentially be the same as nudging the items to compensate for something, but actually nudging the items would make them appear off the grid and you'd end up wanting to fix them. Um, the use for this thing here is let's, let's say you have a, a string library where you can only play it you know you can play it the way you play it but there's an attack on that note like it can't trigger the note before you've played it unless you use something like the media playback offset and you set it to the amount of that attack time for the string library minus 10 milliseconds or whatever that'll be a way that on playback is in time rather than nudging every item Technically, a negative delay in Reaper, especially done through an effects chain, is essentially delaying everything else to match that time. It's all done with the delay compensation. The zoom feature you just used, do you do this with your videos as well, or do you zoom in the edit phase? been trying to figure out the best way to go about this. I'll do both. If I remember, it's a controlled mouse wheel on Mac if you have it enabled uh, in accessibility. Ideally, I do this because that keeps my camera in the right spot. But if you see my camera move as well, then it's done in post. I got a new pedal this week. A Super Overdrive, Boss Super Overdrive, which was super cheap at the pawn shop. So I want to play with that. A uh, question for, for John, do you have, um, John from Toucan Studios, do you have a shape that's more similar to like an opto um, tremolo? Where I think it's got more of a flatter top. It's rounded, but sort of flattish. I don't know if that, that's probably not something we can like draw in. Random and sample and hold, please. I'm sure it must be frustrating to release a plugin that you put in all of your ideas into and then someone's like, not good enough, add more things. I apologize. I'm not nitpicking it, but I would just... That would make it ultimate, just have every possible modulation shape.
external LFO, does that require sidechain or is that going to use its own input? External is you can modulate parameter one and two externally. Okay. Uh, but it's not a envelope follower. Mm, okay. That's fine. Um, somebody mentioned Ottawa and then I thought envelope follower and okay so external do you need to have the tempo set a certain way for that to work i'm looking for pointer green is that right an audio control signal Not quite getting it. <laughs> it's doing something just not expectedly. That's all right. Do you have a delay? Delay machine, khaki delay S2. I've never seen this one. So now we're going to play with this delay. John Matthews, what's the inspiration for this delay? Is there like a particular delay hardware that you're emulating? Are the plugins free or donationware? Yes. Toucan Studios, you can get this through Repack. Huge collection of plugins. Um, I've not explored most of them, but some really good stuff in here. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, the bit crush is definitely a little too aggressive for, for me. I want a little bit of dirt on it, but it's a bit too much for me. I'm trying to make it sound like my old uh, blue DOD analog delay, but the bit crush, uh, definitely wrong for that. <laughs> At least it's very easy to use, way easier to use than Redelay. It'd be nice to have a, a ducking in it if I was gonna, if I was gonna request something. This is a guitar going through the SVT Classic. Just a super simple overdriven sound, slightly overdriven. Clean it up a little bit. Super Overdrive from Boss. Proco Rat. Uh, Ibanez Tube Screamer TS7. Nice to have different options. I'm really liking the Super Overdrive these days. Yeah, the three cameras is really the max for uh, what I can do here because this this camera right here is not a cheap camera, but it is a piece of junk. It never, re and that's why it is, uh, that's why it's in black and white today. I'm not sure if I need the big sky because I've got the Ventress. And to be honest, I don't really use it. It's good, but it's complicated. But yeah, uh, Big Sky or really any Strymon, I would love to have. I want that um, El Capistan. That's probably my favorite from, from Strymon, if that's even the right one. It's like a tremolo and spring reverb. Never matters how many pedals or plugins I have. I'm always gonna wanna wanna get more. I got the Super Overdrive this week because it was like forty-five dollars. Flint. screen does toucan have a reverb Lex oh, right. You see, if the word reverb isn't in the name, I'm not going to find it. Lexican. Okay. This one's not resizable, but that's fine.
So different algorithms. Okay, so this one's based on the 480, and then this one is PCM 92. Is that what it's called? What's the other reverb called? I miss it. And algorithmic or convolution? Judging by the CPU and everything, it's probably algorithmic. Yeah, you probably are. I can mute my mic. Yeah, it just seems like a really kind of straightforward utility kind of reverb. Pretty basic. No real like bad sounds and nothing too weird. So I would like to do modulation after. So I'm going to do this, bright plate, actually no, and I'm going to drag these two to its own track, and I'll create a send. And this one needs to be wet. Thanks for being here, John. Appreciate you taking some time to check out the stream. 
super helpful to have you here to answer questions too. I really think um, Reaper should partner with developers like Toucan to improve the stock plugins because there's so little to, com to complain about with this plugin or the other one as just a basic reverb compared to the built-in stock reverb plugin, which I can't stop complaining about. Reverbate. It's just so blah. It can do some weird stuff, though. So for whoever is here, let's do a bit of Q&A. Is it even necessary for Reaper to go mainstream as long as it suits your needs? Why care what others think or use? Yeah, I agree with that. It really doesn't matter what someone else uses as their DAW. DAW Wars is stupid. You only have coding questions. I can't really help you, but we can use ChatGPT to do it help uh jason says since you're doing the chat gpt video did you end up ponying up the 20 dollars a month or whatever for the paid tier if you're asking because i'm gonna do a video and get paid for it uh if it's the moral thing to do to pay for it no i think 20 dollars a month may be a great deal for someone i don't think it's right for me i don't think i use it quite enough to to do that if it was 10, I would more strongly consider it. Like mid-journey, $10 a month isn't crazy. Even though I only generate like a few images. It's nice to just have that available whenever I want it. ChatGBT isn't, isn't locked, paywalled yet. If it was $10, I would probably do it. Um, $5 definitely. But twenty dollars makes me um, definitely makes me pause. I probably won't make twenty dollars off the video. I'd like to have it where I select an effects plugin; it's the only one displayed. Tried a lot of the checkboxes in the preference. Seems like only one effects window on track selection doesn't work for me. Yeah, I don't really have an answer for that, but I would suggest making a shortcut to close all of the effects windows, all the floating windows, and just get in the habit of constantly tapping that when you wanna close something before opening a new effects window. That's what I do. Either that or I um, just load a screen set that, that will clear all the windows. So workflow looks like this. I press escape to close the windows. Um, if I press this button, oops, making sure that track is selected, that will bring that up. And then the escape button will close that. So that shortcut is, oh, I forget, CS is um, Claudio HB Santos. This is in repack. Show effects chain for item or track depending on mouse context. And then escape key is custom clear all selections. Unselect and well, it's, it's really unselecting, but escape should close the effects chain window if that is in focus. So one button to bring open the effects chain, the button above it closes it. Jason, you missed it. I answered your question in full detail, but you weren't here. What's a feature you wish Reaper had, and what is a Reaper preference you change when you configure a new Reaper? Mostly, I want just a more polished, sort of streamlined starting point. There's a lot of things that are just a little cluttered and all over the place. Some things, when you open it for the first time, just makes no sense. Things like the uh, the effects browser on a new install will have a very narrow 
left column. So every user has to resize that. Things will pop up in weird places. There's a lot of confusing things. There's some preferences that apply to computers running like Windows XP, slow mechanical drives and stuff like that. A lot of the newer systems with SSDs, um, NVMe drives and stuff like that, they don't need the long media buffer things. Lots of things that I customize. It's like making it more, a little more optimized for the faster processors and stuff. So any buffers, I just drop them by half at least. Faster way to toggle show hide parent child tracks and group tracks to left and mixer than going to the menus. I think if you enable those options and save it into a default template, then they'll be set up. So in the mixer, if I wanted to collapse this, I'm pretty sure there isn't an action for that. But um, the settings on the master track, group folders to left, like these, they're called flags. Um, these are saved in the track layouts. No, track, we looked at this last week. Yeah, it's saved in the, in the track views per project. Um, and I think if you set them and then hit this save as default project settings, if you're not using a default template, then those will be saved. There might be a script for um, Yeah, there, there's a button to make the button clickable. Shortcut to make it clickable. Show hide children of selected tracks. I guess that works. Oh, there is. Yeah, there is a shortcut for that. I gotta fix this layout. This is totally broken. So this is a progress on the chat GPT video. Here's the, uh, all the stuff I recorded so far. And then on the left, this is the, the final cut, except I don't have the outro. I'm tempted to change the intro. I don't know what to do. And I got all the B roll in here that I need, I think. This video should have been one day, like an hour of recording maybe at the most, and then be done. Especially with the emphasis on being how easy it is to make ChatGPT work. Um, it uh, has not been an easy video to make in the end. Can't afford to record us here. Hello, John, just wanted to pop by and say thanks for all your wonderful resources. Always enjoy your videos. Thanks so much. I uh, have checked out your channel from time to time. Uh, I saw that you tagged me in a video a while ago. So that's how I found you. You're, you're doing good stuff. Keep it up. Is there a way to render stems from selected tracks not via master and have effects inside a folder applied to tracks inside that folder? Render stems from selected tracks and have effects inside a folder. No, I don't think so. You can render a, a, a folder track and every, and everything will go through that, but you can't render individual tracks. Well, the via master is the way to do it, but that means you have to bypass the the effects on the master track. There can't be anything on there to do what you want. So basically it's one extra step, bypass the effects chain on the master track, then render it selected tracks as stems via master and that'll do it i'm assuming like if you've got five tracks and you want to render five tracks with effects on them then yeah that's the only way to do it catching up on your stream the other week how is the x touch coming along uh haven't touched it really in another week since the last stream i haven't used it at all and that's probably because i don't have um relearn loading up by default in my template but yeah it's been on my desk i just haven't even been using it is there anything chat gb can gpt can do around musical construction perhaps randomizing a set of chords or notes in a key it probably can do that i feel like a lot of that stuff is already built in into reaper i didn't really want to build scripts 
that are already done. There's a lot of stuff in the MIDI editor that I've just never looked at. Randomization tools and stuff are already there. If you look in a uh, repack, there's a ton of stuff for MIDI editor. Yeah, so much stuff. Have you tried the M1 M2 processors for Reaper? Yeah, I've had an M1 Mac since April 2021. I used the M1 Mini for a year and then upgraded to the studio uh, for the M1 Max. You know, whenever they announced, I got one of the first shipments of that. It's good. Really no complaints. Versus my Intel Max, they are silent. The fan, I never hear it. My uh, 2015 MacBook Pro was what I was previously using and that was not handling a lot of the video editing projects. Uh, the fan would be constantly running. If I'm live streaming, the fan would be louder than my mic sometimes. So it was really, really frustrating blowing hot air on my hands. But I've got the Mac Studio on my desk and I don't hear it ever spinning up. I wouldn't worry that much about throttling. I got my uncle to buy the M1 Air because the M2 Air was, well, for his needs, it would be just like an additional expense that it's not gonna take advantage of. I wouldn't get the Air because it's, I don't need a portable computer. I would strongly recommend the Studio. I feel like it's kind of underpriced for the power you get. The Mini is very inexpensive. I think it even dropped in price this year. Getting the Mini for 599 US with an M2 processor, very appealing. I guess the issue I ran into that with that is running out of RAM frequently. So you need the 16 gig. The studio has 32 gigs of RAM and I haven't run into any issues with that. CPU throttling or um, anything. The biggest problem I have right now is my upload speed and I cannot improve that. I wouldn't buy any like 2015 max right now you're coming from a 2011 like 2015 ones are better we just got a uh a macbook air with the non m1 uh we got one used for my daughter and it's loud you can definitely hear the fan on that one i wouldn't go with any intel mac right now all right so the idea for this script is you record a track and you want to make a new track to record on with the same settings, like same effect settings and everything. But on that duplicated track, you don't want any media there. And you don't want to have to click the record arm button again. So I've tried this before and I think it's just my prompt was bad. I'm going to start with this track record armed. I'm going to go to action list, create a new rescript. This is AI, uh, duplicate track for recording, paste, attempt to call a nil value. What does that even mean? Get project context. All right. So. Uh, so it's come up with a API function that does not exist. I use the PC uh, AMD Ryzen 5 based for about a year, but I didn't want to stay on Windows. It was fine. Just I was really missing some of the like Mac exclusive software. It was too much of a pain to constantly go back and forth. It's tried it another way. Reaper duplicate track. I haven't up upgraded to Ventura yet. I keep thinking I'm going to do it like over a weekend and document the process. Stuff works right now, so I don't want to break anything. It keeps making the same mistake here. It's kind of interesting that it's using the main on command functions instead of some different API function. I don't really know much about the new, like the very newest Mac OS. Uh, main thing I'm interested in is um, just like expanding the universal control 
further. Not that I'm using it all, all that much, but any improvements to handoff and universal control and stuff is nice. What is it? Uh, free, free flow, free form, something like that. The drawing app, being able to open those projects or collaborate with it on my iPad and Mac would be ideal. All right. So it doesn't use that function that's missing. Hey, I think, oh, it didn't. <laughs> it copied and pasted, but it didn't delete the track. It's using unselect instead of select. All right, so I'm just gonna change this one action. It's very close. Please use, this was a uh, select all items on track. Instead of 40289. I feel like I'm creating this script more on my own than uh, ChatGPT baking it for me. Did I miss the X-Touch 1 video or is it still in production? I never had an X-Touch 1. I was working on Relearn last week, but uh, haven't really made a whole lot of progress on getting that video done. I haven't touched it since then. There won't be a video specifically on the X-Touch 1 just X-Touch Universal with various control surface uh, integrations. All right, so track two is selected. There's media on that track. i to save. That runs it. The items are not getting deleted. Quarter arm this first track. Run it. It is selecting the track below. If I copy I copy then paste I don't think it needs this line I didn't think it would struggle so much with um, deleting the items on the track Yeah. So the problem was that it it was trying to trying to select the track after it, which was unnecessary. So right. So if there's media, if there's media on the track, it duplicates it without the media. If the track is record armed. Only the new track is record armed. Don't you have a way to force Ripple to be off before selecting all items on track? That would be a good thing to add, to include. That's a good fix. That's that should be there. Here's the updated script. Reply with dot dot dot. I'll, I'll just give it some feedback. Like um, I removed a line was selecting the wrong track because after pasting the track was already was uh, automatic selected okay it's weird that it's talking to me sometimes but okay no i i just gave you the updated script <laughs> all right um Please um, modify the script to make sure ripple editing is set to off. Is it off or none? That's an easy thing that um, can be added here. It just guesses the right word. Yeah, it's word prediction. So which doesn't really make sense to me, but apparently our brains are similar to that. Tom Scott had a good video about ChatGPT in the past week, worth watching. All right, so after this update, we're going to, okay, this, this made it more complicated. If ripple editing was enabled before, turn it back on. That's a nice thing. I probably wouldn't have done it that way. I would have just turned it off 
and left it. What I have not checked, let's just do a regular duplicate on that. Record enable both. And then run this on two of them. Uh, it's got the dumb way of duplicating. If multiple tracks are selected, set focus to last selected track before pasting. I don't really record with ripple editing enabled, but it's one of those things that you should pay attention to. Here's the update. Saving. Uh, that only paste that only got the first um, track, so that's not quite right. Unfortunately, this results in only the first track being selected before copying. All selected tracks should be copied, but they should be uh, pasted at the end of the last selected track. Hopefully it's not breaking other things in this process. Okay, so selecting one track, it's record enabled. It duplicates it without media, but now it's not keeping it record enabled. Unfortunately, this is losing track of which track was record enabled. This was working before. I may have to just go back to a previous version. It was so close to being right, and I think it's gone too far now. I would never play Wonderwall. All right, going back to this version, which has the ripple editing and the track switching correct. All right, so if ripple is on, I can live with that. The, the only issue is if you select multiple tracks and run it, it's doing everything except uh, keeping the right track order. Which I think is just an order of operations issue. I'm going to leave that one as it is. I think that's a useful thing. And it works. I wanted to bring some attention to um, a post on the website that you may not have seen if you only see me through uh, YouTube. So on reaper.blog, I posted a, a thing from Tycho about relearn. Um, so you may have seen this on his channel, but may have totally missed it. Um, he's going, he set up the console one, the soft tube console one control surface with relearn to control things on any plugin, um, various functions for Reaper, even his speakers are controlled through this. Uh, or through relearn. It's pretty cool. I use ChatGPT for this section. You can probably tell because it always concludes with overall. I found it pretty useful. And then uh, there's a previous video that I did with him. I just wanted to bring that up because I didn't mention it on YouTube yet. Sometimes you guys forget that the website exists. I kind of want to make a, a quick song. Don't know if we have enough time for that. And I loaded up one of these uh, templates and it didn't work. That one worked. Okay. Where are all the grooves? Why are there not more grooves? That'll work, I guess. 
Do I use Superior Drummer 3? No, I'm using Contax or XO or Addictive Drums 2 or Steven Slate Drums, whatever version they're on. Five. That'll work. Do you need to configure your gain every time you record, or is that just me? I don't. I don't. But, I mean, you probably should. Anywhere below zero, that's fine. Duplicate that, and then this will be the right, and this will be the left. Yeah, so that's that's a thing. The script works. It might be cool to have it say like copy or duplicate or something in the track name. Are drums with metronome not putting you off? Yeah, they are kind of. I don't think my timing is particularly good. Let's duplicate this one. Center it. Let's get...
I don't know. I should probably just end the stream here. I said in the beginning that it's going to be kind of a low energy, casual thing. We did some things that were fun and interesting, but it's been a slow week. Not a whole lot to talk about. Not a whole lot going on. And uh, I got a busy rest of my day, so I can't spend too much more time on this. Um, if you missed the previous stream yesterday, the uh, edited version went up. This one will be out by next Thursday. There will be a chat GBT video coming out. Other stuff. Hopefully other stuff. Easier things to produce than that one. All right. Thank you again for joining me for this stream for the past three hours. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Oh, I made it. I made a thing for it. Where is it? Hang on. Hang on. There it is.